Okay, so the title of my presentation is a little bit different of the title given in the program. In the program is simply materialization and idealization of information. But when I started preparing uh, this presentation, I understood that uh, without explaining the illusion that exists in the area of information, it's impossible to understand uh, the main ideas of this work. So in the area of information, there exists a grand illusion that I will now explain what does it mean. And we need to begin with the global structure of the world. And the global structure of the world is uh, described, is modeled by the existential triad of the world. They shows that the world as a whole actually consists of three components. The physical world, which is relatively well studied and described by physics, chemistry, biology, and other natural sciences. Then there is a mental world. And we also know that the mental world is different from the physical world and it encompasses different forms and levels of mentality. And there is essential difference, distinction between physical world and mental world. The mental world uh, to some extent or the rule contains an image of the physical world. However, it can contain much more. For, for instance, according to the psychological object relations theory of Melanie Klein, uh, well known uh, psychologist from the earliest moments of life, children construct imaginary fantasies creating the world of the unreal real. And this is also true not only for uh, children, but for many adults, especially creative adults who create some mental reality. Now, what's also necessary to tell about the mental world that usually it is considered uh, coming from Descartes as individual mentality. However, the mental world, similar to the physical world, has uh, many uh, levels, levels, many layers. Uh, there is individual mentality. There is a group mentality. There is organizational mentality, there is social mentality, and there are even more levels in this mental world. <coughs> While physical and mental worlds are accessible by human senses, the world of structures can be achieved only by the intellect as later predicted. And actually the world of structure is a scientific interpretation of the world of ideas of forms uh, suggested or introduced by Plato. Because uh, when Plato introduced his ideas and forms, there was a question, what is an idea of form? Uh, when uh, we speak about structures as 
scientific interpretation of ideas of forms, there is a exact definition of the term structure. And also what's necessary to tell all the structures were studied and uh, utilized in many areas of science and mathematics and in practical activity of people. The understanding of structures was uh, only partial. To tell it in mathematical terms, uh, people understood and formalized only structures of the first order. Also, there is also a, an infinite hierarchy of structures, structures of the second order, structures of the third order, and so on. Uh, I will discuss these orders of structures in another lecture at this summit, uh, which is uh, which will be given in a conference of philosophy and computers. Uh, it will be on Wednesday, and then we will discuss with. Uh, Rao Miklinini, uh, applications of structural machines uh, to the concept of computation, to the theory and practice of computation. So now I go further with the topic of this presentation. And as you know, information is an important phenomenon in nature, society, and technology, and has a huge variety of information manifestations with a common feature. When people encounter information, it is associated with some physical entity. This situation brought many researchers to the conclusion that information is physical. For example, we have uh, papers published by Landauer, but this is an opinion of many other uh, researchers. However, according to the general theory of information, information belongs to the ideal world of structures, which is a scientific incarnation of the world of Plato ideas of forms. This place of information looks contradictory to this assumption that information is physical and to the fact that to the fact of the incessant presence of information in nature, society, and technology. I'm going to show here that this is only a grand illusion. To better explain this, clarifying the meaning of materialization, why being ideal information only seems physical to people. I would like to suggest the flying metaphor. So what does it mean? If we ask the question whether people can fly, the answer will be yes and no, yes. An individual can take a plane or a helicopter and fly to another city, another country, or even another continent. The answer is also no, because without technical means, people cannot fly. So to fly, an individual has to embed herself or himself into a technical device, for example, a plane, which is designed for flying. So people cannot fly without technical means. We see in this picture that an individual is sitting and only looking at the plane. So to fly, people have, and we go to the next picture, 
to go to the airport, to be embedded in a plane, which is a flying carrier of people, and only then to fly. In a similar way, to come to the physical world of people, information which belongs to the ideal world of structures must be embedded into or embodied with a physical carrier. The process of this embedment or embodiment is called materialization. Some physical, uh, some researchers argue that information is physical because it acts on physical things. This is similar to the argument that people are birds because people can fly. Actually, people, uh, information can uh, act on physical things only because it has a representation and it has a physical carrier. And here we come to the ontological information because ontological information, it's exactly information that acts on physical things, on physical systems. While uh, ontological, uh, uh, while uh, epistemic or epistemological information art acts on knowledge, acts on mentality, on mental system of knowledge. Another proof, a more formal proof of the ideal nature of information gives the situation when different physical things carry or provide the same information. Thus, physical things are not portions of information, but they contain a portion of information. For instance, different mails, letters with the same text definitely contain the same information. The same phrase written on the paper or displayed on the screen of the computer in both cases contains the same information. Even different sentences can contain the same information. All these mails, letters, printed or written phrases and sentences are physical embodiments of information. Now let's look at the following texts. We see that physical representation is different. One sentence is small, another is big, the third is blue, uh, one more is green, the last is in a different font, but <coughs> they, <coughs> they give the same information. Independently that they have a uh, different physical representation, different physical carriers. Their carriers are those uh, pixels of the screen that form this text. And we can clearly see that the physical embodiment of information is similar to clothes of people. A person wearing different outfits nevertheless remains the same person as a rule. And now we can understand uh, how uh, information being Idol uh, can act on physical things. An example of such ontological information is genetic information. Genetic, uh, the main uh, goal of genetic information is not to give knowledge to people, but uh, 
to form uh, molecules at first uh, from uh, molecules of the genome of DNA to proteins and further uh, to developing the whole organism of a person. And uh, genetic information is not part of the uh, DNA. It is carried by systems in uh, DNA. And what's also important is uh, that genes are not uh, linear texts. They are hypertext. And unfortunately, this is not taken into account by uh, contemporary genetics and phonetics. And uh, here uh, we see that there is a difference between the essence of a phenomenon and its appearance, where the representation of information is its appearance of the first order, while the carrier of information is its appearance of the second order. And because uh, what is the difference between uh, representation and the carrier? Uh, a sentence a as a linguistic structure is a representation. But a sentence, sentence printed on the paper or uh, projected on the screen is a carrier. This projection is a carrier. We can say that any carrier is also a representation, but not any representation of information is its carrier. And in the context of materialization, information has two meanings. First, materialization of information is a process of representing this information by a material object or system. Second, it is a material or physical representation of this information that is a result of the materialization process. And there is also the process of information idealization, which goes in the opposite direction and which is reciprocal, but not always inverse to materialization of information. Uh, both these processes are represented as name sets. But now I don't have enough time to explain what does it mean. Also, the concept of a name set is the basic structure in the world of structures. It is also necessary to stress the difference between abstraction and idealization, between abstract and ideal objects. Abstract objects are built and live or exist in the mental world, in mentality. Abstraction is a process of constructing abstract objects by abolishing more and more properties of physical or mental objects on the level, on the lower level of abstractions. Ideal objects live and exist in the world of structure. Idealization is a process of re reflection of physical and mental objects in the realm of ideal structures. Here are some examples. An abstract straight line from the Euclidean geometry is only imagined by the mind as perfectly straight 
and even it involves direction. An ideal straight line, which corresponds to the ideal image in the Euclidean geometry, is perfectly straight and infinite in both directions. It is possible to build different models of abstract straight line from the Euclidean geometry. To each of these models, an ideal straight line corresponds. Besides, there is an ideal straight line which unifies all these abstract straight lines. <coughs> uh, it is necessary to remark that now there are no experimental data of information materialization and idealization. That is why these processes have the status of a theoretical hypothesis with a circumstantial evidence. Namely, the, this hypothesis is supported by the fact that being a phenomenon in the world of structure, information can impact physical systems. Uh, to conclude, <coughs> we attract attention also to the process of mentalization of information. It is a mirror image of materialization. While materialization is the physical embodiment of information, mentalization is the mental embodiment of information. I would like also to tell and uh, that this research uh, stems for uh, my common paper with Krasimir Markov that was published in uh, 1991, where we gave a formal definition of materialization based on some mathematical structure. And with this, I would like to finish this presentation.